catch myself help me Welcome back to Queen's Mindset. If this is your first time joining us, welcome, welcome, welcome. We are super excited to have you here with us tonight because guess what? We have another powerful woman to share another powerful story. And I can't wait to introduce you to her because she is phenomenal. But before we get to it, if you have not done this already, I want you to go right ahead and just hit that subscribe button just down below and make sure that you are subscribed to this channel so that you can be kept abreast of every video when it comes out. All right, so let's head right into it. Let's introduce you to our guest for tonight. We have Joyanne. Joyanne, welcome. How are you doing? Hi, I'm doing great. Thank you, Kamisha, so much for having me on your show. I really appreciate you. You are most welcome. Thank you so much for saying yes. yes. <laughs> so, so Diane, I know you have a powerful story and many women right now, they're thinking, you know, what is their story? They can't wait to hear your story. But before we get into it, I want you to tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. Okay, my name is Joy Ann. Um, I'm from the beautiful island of Barbados. Um, I married... Um, about 17 years, going on 18 years now, to a wonderful man named John. Um, together, we have four kids, and God has blessed us to take care of two more. So till we have a total of six kids that we're raising right now. Um, I work at a children's hospital. And apart from that, I do ministry at my church. So I'm the coordinator for the greeting team, as well as I just started a dance group called Joyful Noise. Um, but Joyanne and another is very spontaneous and love to see people happy and laughing. Wow, Joyanne, where do you find the time? <laughs> One day at a time, sweet Jesus. <laughs> One day at a time. Wow, well, that's amazing. That's amazing. I find it very interesting that every single woman that we have on this show, when they talk about who they are and what they do, is so many things that they do. And I guess sometimes you don't, you don't really mm -hmm. feel as though you're doing a lot until you yeah. start this, those things like hold up I do this I do that I do this. yes, yes. And you're like what this is yes. insane, you know but mm -hmm. when you are grace for it you are grace for it so Joya you have a phenomenal story and I want you to share your story here tonight with those women who are watching but I want you to start from the beginning and tell us where it all started for you okay so the story the, the story of my life that I would like to share with everyone is how I came to America um, at a young age, very young age, and didn't know the system of America. And it left me broken and discouraged and um, bruised, but God. Yeah. So I would like to start from the first day. I can remember the day my mom um, sent for me to come to America. So you see, my mom went to America to get a better life for me and my brother. And she left me with my aunt. And it was finally my time to come to America to come and be with her. And I was so excited. In the words of Bajans, I was so fussy. <laughs> like, you know, I had my suitcase ready. I was ready to go. And I had like big dreams, even though I didn't know what dreams were then. I, I remember having an uncle in America and he was an electrical engineer. And I said, when I get there, I just, I want to be just like him. I want to be electrical engineer. You know, I want and I want to wear the nice clothes and I want to do all the shopping because you see these things on TV, right? So you think, Oh my goodness, I can't wait to get there and live the dream, the American dream. And when I got there, it felt that way. It was beautiful. Like, you know, I had a lot of friends and we would go out partying and shopping, you know, as a little girl going to like little kids parties and stuff like that. And it was a lot of fun. But I did notice that my mom was working a lot. And one day she had asked me to come and meet her by her job. And usually I would wait downstairs for her, but this time 
I decided to like ease upstairs to see what she was doing. And I don't know, for some reason, it just hit me like a ton of bricks that my mom wasn't rich <laughs> because, you know, when you're in Barbados, you see pe people sending over barrels and, That's right. and, you know, and they have on the best, but the job she was doing, she was taking care of elderly people. And the way she was doing, she had to be lifting them and carrying them and, you know, and she's just a small little lady. So it really broke me that, you know, my mom is doing all of this to support me. And I remember running down the stairs and crying. And in my head, as a small child, I said, I don't want my mom to live this kind of life. I don't want her to work this hard to support me. So I'm going to do my best to get a, get a good education, get a good job and support her. So I went to school and I, I wasn't the smartest, but I, I would go to teachers and I would say, I need an A. <laughs> <laughs> give me extra work, give me whatever you have to give me, but I need an A, and I was determined, and I remember the, the year I, I went on, like, National Honor Society, I uh, was on, like, Who's Who's for America, because I was doing really good in school, and the counselor, he was, like, you know, really impressed, so he said, you know what, I have a job for you to go to, working with lawyers, I feel like this is going to help you, you know, in your career. And I was so excited, you know, I put on my suit and I was ready to go work there the first week and loved it. And the second week, they called me in the office and they said, um, ma'am, you can't work here. And I said, why? I, I was like, I don't think I did anything wrong. I was doing everything right. They said, you don't have documents. And I was young and I didn't understand what they were talking about. So, you know, I was sad. I love crying, but it didn't deter me because I know my grades were good. And I've heard that if I have good grades, I can get a scholarship and I can go to college. So I went back to the counselor and he, um, I started visiting colleges, um, even though I was, you know, I was in high school, but I was visiting colleges and there was one college that I really love and it was called Emmanuel College. And um, he called me in the office after I went to visit and he said, guess what? you got accepted. Wow. And he said, but guess what? You can't go. <laughs> and I was like, what do you mean? And he said, you don't have any documents. And, and again, that document thing came up again. And I'm like, what does this document thing mean? You know? And so I started crying and he felt so much compassion for me. He wanted to help me because he knew what the, the word document meant, but mm -hmm. shortly after he passed away. So he wasn't able to help me at all. So um, I remember just crying and, you know, angry that like, I can't work, I can't go to school. So what do I do? So the day of my graduation, when I should be excited because I'm getting like awards and I got my diploma, um, I was full of anger and resentment and oh. bitterness. I was bitter. Like I, I was just so angry because I felt like I worked so hard and now high school is finished. And now what do I do with my life? I don't know what to do. And so. So your, so your anger and resentment was, who was that towards? I think it was towards that the fact that I work so hard and now I can't do anything about it. Like it wasn't towards my mom because it was more towards me. Like, I felt like I let her down. Oh. Yeah. And, wow. yeah. So now you got to that point, you know, you recognize, hey, I can't go to college. I couldn't even do the job. That was like a really big job for you and a big deal. And you recognize these things were not going to be possible because you have to get these documents. Tell us about how you were able to figure out how to go about getting the documents and how long did that process take? Okay, so um, after I left school, like, and like, there was nothing really to do. And so I, I met some friends and they started saying like, you know, you know, smoke and that will help numb the pain. So I tried that, you know, like, or go party and, and so I did that. And so, I, cause I was trying to numb the pain because it was like, no, nowhere else, no else for me to turn to. And so, um, um, I remember just feeling really like sad that like, 
I couldn't do what my friends were doing. Like they were off to college and stuff like that. And the sad part about it is that what my mom was doing, I ended up doing. So I ended up taking care of old people, cleaning houses, you know, babysitting here and there. This was the same thing that you didn't want your mother to do anymore. And yeah. you didn't have any interest in it, of course. This is no. <laughs> and then I end up doing it. Um, so, but I just, you know, I just, well, like, what would I say is that I didn't know what to do, to be honest. And in my parts, my time of brokenness and hurting and being upset, like, I'm thanking God for a praying mother because I was going down a road to destruction. I was just starting to hang around the wrong people and stuff like that. But I thank God for a praying mom. Like I said, I remember coming home after partying all night and she, I would feel oil on my head or on my feet. You know, I, she wouldn't pray out loud, but I knew she was praying for me. Mm -hmm. And one day I had a dream and I remember just, this dream was just telling me that I really need to surrender my life to Christ. And when I, I did, I remember that like, there was just this peace and this joy that I can't even explain. Um, this, the resentment started to like peel away, um, but I still didn't have no documents, right? So, so I would love to tell everybody that, oh, I gave my life to Christ. And then all of a sudden I was dancing in tulips, but I literally had to wait 16 years before I can get documents. Wow. And during that course of the 16 years as you waited, and of course you continue doing the, you know, the jobs that you could have done, which is to help with the elderly and to do cleaning. Who was your support? Who, who could you lean on? Was there anyone you can talk to about what you were going through? And you know, I kind of voice that frustration that you was that you were having. Um, I would say my mom, we never really talk about the document thing, but I know I could lean and depend on her. Um, we used to pray together for God to make a way for us because we didn't know, you know, what God's plans were, but we just know that he didn't bring us this far to leave us. So once I gave my life to Christ, I just surrender and I said, God, I don't want to do anything. You know, I don't want to do anything because I'm desperate. I want to wait on you. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say my mom was my support system. And I used to go to a church at a time called Greater Bethlehem Temple and the pastor and their wife. Um, I believe they had an idea that I didn't have documents, um, but they were, but they never, you know, say anything, but they were a great support to me and also um, my family. But one um, person in particular was one of my aunts named Auntie Margaret. She she was very inspirational to me and would like encourage me because my spirit started to get really low. I started to feel like I didn't have any self-worth or I didn't feel like, you know, not that I didn't want to go on because I never felt like ending my life, but I just felt like we're, there's no hope. There's, no, there's nothing else I can do. And she would always say, you know, life is never going to be always one way. Get up and try, you know? So I would just try doing anything and just wait for my time to come wow wow that's a that's amazing that you had you know that you had that support you had your pastors in your corner even though like you said they didn't necessarily knew what exactly what it was but you could go to them for anything yes did you feel like any form of guilt or any form of feeling like you were being ostracized because you didn't have your your um, documents or was it that you just felt like I had to keep quiet about this because I didn't quite have things in place and it was kind of afraid you know should I mention it to the wrong person I don't want to have to leave you know how how did that go for you so exactly like I didn't share with a lot of people um people call me the vault after a while because I literally like <laughs> shut down because again, you didn't know who you can trust and you don't want people to judge you because people always think that people that come here, you know, from another country come off the boat and they jump on a boat and they came here and they're ready to do illegal stuff. And that was not the case of me. I came here as a child and I didn't know what was going on. Yes. So, you know, I didn't share 
I think I have friends up to today that probably don't know. So when they see this video, they'll, they'll know that like, yeah, I was very, very quiet about it wow. because I didn't know what, what the outcome of my life would be, you know, and I didn't want to leave my mom. Mm -hmm. So at any time, did you blame your mom and say, you know, you know, you should have known, you should have put things in place, you know, see mm -hmm. at any time, did you feel that way? No, because I knew that in her heart that she came, she is a, a very honest person. I think she, she came here in the hopes that someone was going to help her and it didn't work out. So she, she didn't meant to ruin my life. You know, she never meant to hurt me in any ways. I know that when she sent for me, she sent for me because she loved me and she wanted to take care of me, you know, and she wanted me to be with her. I never, I never ever um, thought that she brought me here so that I could feel resentful and hurtful and stuff like that. I never, never felt that way. Wow. That's amazing. And I have to ask this question and I'm not asking to give persons ideas who may be watching and getting ideas, but how were you guys able to, you know, to find a place to live, to do the things that you need to do that obviously you need to show some type of paperwork for? How did that process work out for you? How did God show up then? God, <laughs> like, I mean, like God just, I mean, as far as like a house and situation, I guess the gentleman knew, I think he knew my mom's situation and he knew that my mom was an honest person. She was gonna, she paid every single month. She never like, you know, she never was late on her rent. So he trusted her. Um, other things like we just waited, like instead of getting a car, we had to catch the train and the bus, you know, like we never did anything that was like illegal. We just waited on God like literally like waited on God for, you know, people that give us a job, most of them knew like this was our situation and they just wanted to give us money so that we can like be able to live, you know? And I think that's an amazing story to tell because I know that there might be someone, maybe there's a woman right now you're watching and you're like, oh my goodness, this is me. This is where I'm at right now. And I am ready because see most times persons like we know when you migrate from one point to another, it's because you're looking for better. Okay. And you're only leaving a place because you're not in a good space. You want to go and attain better. So you guys being able to come to that place so you can attain better, it's an it's a, it's a opportunity for you to be able to dive into the things that you wouldn't have had access to here on this island. So for that person who's watching right now, and if you're in that space, I want you to feel encouraged. I want that as Diane continues to share her story, that you understand that you're not alone and you don't have to stay in that place alone. You need to just find that support, find that person that you can lean on, that person that you can be able to, you know, someone who you can confide in. And of course, the main individual you want to find is God because in Joanne's situation, she had God. And yes. that is what made the significant difference in her life. So you talked a bit earlier, Joanne, you said that when you met Christ, when you gave your life to Christ, that's when things started to kind of change for you. How did that happen? How did that, tell, me, tell us how that happened, how you were able to give your life to Christ? Um, I When I gave my life to Christ, I, I think I mentioned before, like I had the dream that like, you know, there was, I was up in clouds and then I dropped and then I didn't see anyone, but I heard someone say, if you don't serve me now, you'll suffer the consequences. And, and like I said, um, when I gave my life to Christ, it wasn't a tulip. I wasn't going on tulips. I had recently, right after that, I had got hit by a car. Um, I was running and I got hit by a car and I went into the, the windshield and flew off the car. And then the following week we got robbed. So, um, but God, when he came into my life and he saved me, there was, again, like there was this peace. Like it didn't matter. It, I realized that my, my peace was not going to be in this documents. Cause before I was thinking like, if I get my documents, life was going to be so much better and so much happier. But when I found Christ, that's when I found peace and joy and contentment. And, you know, and even through that process, like I've learned, I learned how to be humble and compassionate because I think if I didn't go through that situation, there may, there may, maybe many times I would push up my nose at people, but when you're down low and you don't know when the next food is going to come from, now that you have it, you want to give it to somebody else. So, you know, everything that we go through, I believe is for purpose, you know? 
Yeah, that's so true. That's so true. So when you got into the accident, you yeah. said that you flew right into the windshield. You said, mm -hmm. and how? Tell so so how how did that work for you? Because how did that accident? I'm trying to paint the picture of yeah. how you know how this was miraculous. So tell us how that occurred for you. Well, I believe it was miraculous because right before then God had told me if I don't serve him I'm going to suffer the consequences mm -hmm. and I believe when that accident happened God was shielding me from something shielding me from that accident because even when the the firefighters and the policemen came they said ma'am do you believe in miracles because I never seen somebody got hit and and able to respond the way you are like and I my back got messed up my spine got messed up and you know they the doctor had told me like oh don't consider having kids because the way your spine was messed up but four kids later plus two I mean wow. God was all in it <laughs> yes wow wow that's amazing that's amazing yeah. God is still in the miracle making business yes that's, he is wow, that's amazing yeah so tell us about when you uh, met your boss because now you journey through and you know you worked on your documents 16 years later you're able to have everything in place so you're excited and now you can actually do the things that you wanted to uh -huh. tell us how you were able now to meet your boss okay so i was going to that church like i said and i was just busy for the things of god i wasn't looking for no man <laughs> i really wasn't i was just like so busy and i honestly didn't realize that like even like I did, I didn't have the documents, but I was so busy for the things of God that it, like it didn't phase me. And, you know, there was a young gentleman that was at our church and, you know, he has so much interest in me, but I wasn't interested at all because I just wanted the things of God and I wanted God's will. And I used to always say, God, I want your will, nothing more, nothing, nothing less. So, you know, he came and we talk and, um, and, you know, he, I would, I would like to say that he was the Moses in my life. Like when I told him, he never once like judged me or put me down or, you know, he just came right alongside of me and was like, I'm with you all the way. Mm, that's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. So how long did you guys uh, court before he proposed? But we were friends first. So we were friends. Um, I was hard to get. <laughs> <laughs> so we was friends first, you know, and and that, so I think we were friends about for like a couple of years, like four or five years, and we would yeah. just hang out and talk and stuff like that. And then I think we started, we got engaged about like a year after that. Like so, we were friends for about five six years, and then we, wow. yeah, so like we knew each other and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's amazing. I I love that that you built that foundation of friendship because that's what marriages need, friendship, you know? Yes. You always need to come back to that. So that's really, really amazing. So I haven't gone through all that you would have experienced um, so far as it relates to, you know, with being undocumented. Is there anything about that journey that you would change? Um, I would say, I would say no. Because you know what, it has taught me so many different things. I mean, there was a lot of question wise. I think for me, if I knew that God's delay was not his deny, I probably wouldn't question him so much and got mad and walked down. And, you know, I would just be like, ah, God, why this happening to me? And why are you allowed us? You know, I questioned God so many times. Like, and I just think if I had just trust him in the process, I think I could have done that differently. Just trust him in the process and say, God, I trust you. Because along the way, God kept ministering to me. Like he would, you know, there was times where I was like, God, I, this is frustrating. And he would say, you know, peace, be, um, be still. Like he would say, you know, be still. Like I got a plan. Don't worry. You know, or be, and I would just be like, but when is it going to happen? It's five years now, it's six years now. And I would get upset at God, you know, I get upset at God. But if I, what I know now, I would have just trust the process because when God bless you, girl, Kamisha, sister to sister, he blesses you. I mean, God, I mean, sometimes I look and I can't believe the, the blessings of God. Wow. Yes. And he'll wow. give you a good thing. My husband is amazing, like amazing. Not because, um, you know, I'm here on TV. He's really amazing. He's a real God-fearing man. And I'm so glad I waited. 
Oh my, that's amazing. That is amazing. I, and I have to agree. When God blesses you, you are well blessed. You don't have to question it. You know that you are well blessed. And that's yeah. really, 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 really amazing. And one of these things about what you share that I like to say that, you know, he never looked down on you. He never questioned you because he knew who you were at the core. And being undocumented was just a thing. It was just a part of your story, but it wasn't yeah. who you are. Oh, and I think that that's, in, that's really important for those women who are watching here tonight who can identify with your story to understand that if this is you and this is where you are, that, you know, that does not define who you are. That's just a part of your journey. Yeah. And then you said another key thing there. You talked about the process. If there was one thing you could change, you wish you could just trust the process. And I know <laughs> that every time in every stage of our life, we have a challenge with trusting the process why? Yeah. Because we want to know. Exactly. <laughs> Especially exactly. women. Like, we need to know this. We need to know that because we love to plan. So we mm -hmm. need to know if they're going to go left because if it's going to go left, we need to know what's going to happen yes. then. And we have yeah. so many questions. Mm -hmm. And I know that that really takes away the element of surprise for God to be able to shower us because if we know everything he's going to do, when it happens, we're not going to, you know, be that yes. Excitement and, and you know, I really want to honor because he yeah, expected it. So it's like, thanks, you know. Yeah. So it's important that we leave that out. And I know it's much easier said than done because mm -hmm. for me, I still struggle with the uh, trust in the process myself. Right. Like, <laughs> different stages, you know, yes. you start to trust, even though there may be times when you would have gone through certain things in your life mm -hmm. that you would have been like, okay, based on that, I know this is going to happen. Yes. Still, the process somehow seems different like mm -hmm. never been there before and you're thinking like really when is it going to come to an end yes <laughs> so tonight ladies just be encouraged we really want to encourage you tonight yeah. that stay 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 in position yeah. you are going to come out of this you're going to pull through this but you mm -hmm. have to through it first so that you can get to the next side the only way you're going to get this if you continue to move down don't get flustered don't get frustrated i know it's natural to feel that way you want to feel it you want to give up but be encouraged tonight that stay focused and stay the course i know we talked about feeling like wanting to give up at mm -hmm. any time did you feel like you want to give up did you feel like you know what um, i'm just going to go back to barbados i i just can't deal with this anymore did you feel that way at any point I didn't feel that way because I know God told me to be still. So when he told me to be still, as much as I wanted to go, I always just say, God, I want your will. And when he told me to be still, I said, okay, God, I just want to be still. Yeah. You know, people was telling me different things to do or stay. And I was like, no, God, I need to, I need to know what you want me to do. And so I never felt, I never felt like giving up, like ending my life. But there was times where I just questioned, did I do wrong? Yeah. <laughs> you know what did I do wrong to to have this happen to me but now mm -hmm. I realize like it was just teaching me teaching yeah. it was a teaching moment it teach me to be patient and to be humble and to be a servant because I remember one time I was so mad I was like look at me cleaning houses and you know <laughs> I was so mad and I was walking running down the street trying to get the bus and God I heard God whisper to whisper to me I'm teaching you to serve Mm. to be a servant so I said okay God I get it so wow that's amazing I'm teaching you to serve and mm -hmm. you know most times we don't want to serve nobody wants to do the cleanup job you know? <laughs> for real <laughs> like leave that for someone else yes. you don't want to do that but you know it's in the cleanup job that the lessons are learned Mm -hmm. You know, that's where we really learn those gold nuggets and really get. So it also builds you, your discipline, your character. It builds mm -hmm. that in you. Because when we look back at the story of, of Jesus, you know, he served. Yes. You know who he was, when he came, he never behaved like, hey, I'm Jesus. So you mm -hmm. need to, you know, he walked with them. He went with them. And he, he was not someone who put himself in isolation because he felt as though he was better than anyone. But yeah. he was willing to mingle. He was willing to do the dirty stuff so yeah. that he can build. And, and that's amazing because he's teaching us how we should live our lives. You know, so again, ladies, if you're taking notes, I want you to write this one down as well. <laughs> yeah. It's important that you serve in whatever you're going through right now. Know that you're not just going through it for you. You're going through it for someone else because Joya went through what she went through. 
so that today she can share her story with you. Yeah, and yeah. some woman on here is watching and she's feeling really encouraged. And I really want to encourage you guys who are watching this tonight. If you have not shared this link with a friend, go right ahead, share it with a friend. I want you to share it on WhatsApp, share it on Facebook, share it on Instagram, share it on all of your platforms and make sure if you got to email it out, email it out, but share, 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 because you don't know who needs to hear this tonight. And you don't want to be the one that is standing in the way, blocking that person from being able to receive this hope and encouragement that they need. So yeah. share this link with them. And if you have not subscribed to this channel, then what are you waiting for? Go right ahead <laughs> and subscribe. Just hit subscribe yes. Just down below and make sure that you are subscribed. All right, Joanne. So now you have gone through that and now you were able to know you have everything in place now you can go back to school because remember you said earlier you didn't get to go to college no. you didn't get to do these things that you wanted to but tell us what are some of the things that you wanted to do that now you were able to get things in place that you were able then to do so the when i got married i got pregnant like the next year but that didn't <laughs> deter me because I went to school big pregnant and all, and I got a degree in wow. early childhood. And then I went back to school when I had my fourth kid. And mm -hmm. I went, I got a degree in um, medical administration. And now I'm going back to school. <laughs> I'm wow. in school right now. And I'm mm -hmm. in the process of going back to school. I forgot to mention that. Mm -hmm. um, just keep me in your prayers. <laughs> it's not easy. <laughs> Definitely. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. And you were able to go back. And what age were you able to go back? At? Go back to school. school at? Probably like 28. Wow. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Like, sometimes we think it's like we're too old, you know, like, oh my God, all those years gone by. But I feel like yeah. God is just bringing back everything that the locusts eat. He's just like replenishing and like, you know, giving me the strength to do it, you know. Yeah. And I am so grateful because I think now I appreciate when I get it. I'm so grateful when I do get things, when I do accomplish things, because I know it's only God and God alone yeah. that allowed me to finish school or, you know, you know, get whatever I have in life. Yeah. And who was your support team while you were going to school? Because like you said, you got pregnant just after you started school and then you went back when you had your full Yeah. <laughs> Who did you have to lean on through that process? My husband, my mom and my husband um, and God, God like helped me so much, but I, I don't like, I have a lot like from my church. I have like, a, we're like family. So I don't want to leave them out. They're, my church family is really good to us. Yeah. That's, yeah. Amazing. that's really amazing that you get to see that too as well, because I know there's some people that they can't necessarily say that. So, you know, hats off to your church family for standing by your side and everybody pitching in. And of course, mom and husband, you know, we know they're going to come and pitch in. And that's amazing that you mm -hmm. had those persons in your corner. What's also amazing that you had the strength to go back. Because some persons would have felt ashamed, you know, at coming back at such an older age and felt like, okay, I passed my time, you know, let me just settle. I'm just, but I love the fact that you were so determined to do what you know you could do. Yeah. And that's encouragement again for a lady who's watching tonight. It doesn't matter where you are right now. If there's a dream or there's a goal that you wanted to do yeah. and you didn't get to do it a few years ago, five years ago, three years ago, then let's start today. Let's start. Let's start. Yeah, let's not no worry. excuses. Exactly. <laughs> Joanne surely didn't have excuses. She was pregnant. You're right. I was, <laughs> eight, I was eight months pregnant and I was yeah. going to school and working at night. So I was working. Well, at oh, night and going to school so the, yeah if, wow. if you can it's do all things through christ through christ not through i can't yeah. do it in myself but through christ we can do it that's amazing that's resilience right there you were resilient and that's what we love to highlight here on basket groups not broken because they try to break you but you didn't break you just bend you bounce you right back right. to place you know Hallelujah. So look at that look Amen. at that. god is that. faithful thank you jesus Yes, yes. So, Joanne, if you had to encourage a woman right now who's watching us here tonight and she's hearing your story for the first time, and of course, she's connecting with you because she has been there before, what would be your words of encouragement to her? Um, if there's a woman that is in the same situation that I was in, I just want to tell you do not give up. Do not, do not get discouraged. I know it is discouraging. I know, like, you just want to know when is my time going to come, yeah. but 
trust God. And if you trust God, he will always make a way for you. He promised never to leave us or forsake us. And he's not going to bring you this far to leave you. God has a purpose and a plan for our life, but we got to put our hands in his hands and let him direct our path. And um, just trust God, trust the process. Like I would say, I, I wish I trust the process more because I feel like there was a lot of times I murmur and complain, but when I got the so what do you call it when I got the revelation of just like trust the process and God's God's um plan for my life started to unfold so I just want to tell you don't give up God is never late and his delay is not his denied that's right Amen. that is right you said it right there his delay is not denied and he's never late so wherever you are, you are not late. You are right on time. Yeah, right on time. Yeah, one thing to remember, God does not operate in time. Inside of time, he operates on the outside of time. So time is not an issue for him. So he doesn't look at time, you know, and that's amazing because it means that when God puts it in place, you know, again, it's well done. It's yeah. really well done. So we are coming close to the end, but I have to ask if they you know there's a woman right now, she's watching and she's thinking, oh my goodness, I really want to connect with her. I felt like I really can relate to her story right now. Where can they reach you? Tell them where they can look for you on social media. Okay, on social media, um, I'm on Facebook. I don't really have too much social media, but I'm on Facebook, um, Joy Ann Chandler, mm -hmm. or you can email me at jtempleofjesus at yahoo.com. Awesome. So ladies, if you want to connect, go right ahead to Facebook. You know, it's always great to go over there, send her a message. I'm sure when you send her a message, she's going to respond, you know, and you can share with her. So don't be shy. If you have a question, go right ahead. She wants to hear that. And if you're not commenting down below, please go ahead and comment now because we want to hear your views about our discussion here tonight. You want to hear what you think about it. You know, tell us everything in the comments below. Just, just go ahead and comment, comment. And of course, share 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 all right so again we're coming close to the end and i have to ask you this final question before we wrap up and that is if there's anything tonight that you know that you wanted to share but i maybe not have gotten an opportunity to ask that question i want you to go ahead and you know and share those last words with those women here tonight okay um i would love to say to you kamisha i want to thank you for having this platform for women to share uh you don't know how much this has touched my life i mm -hmm. i was feeling so down and broken at one point and every wednesday i would just love to turn on your you know your queen mindset um, broken battered mm -hmm. program and just listen to these women keep it real and share their you know what they've been through and how they overcome and this platform has really encouraged me to speak out because I was, again, I was a very private person, didn't want to share anything, but I realized like these people touched my life and I want to touch somebody else's life. But I want to thank you for having this platform for like, women to share and to be honest and open and vulnerable. Um, but because it's healing, it's very healing. Yes, yes, you are most welcome. You're correct. It's really healing. So, and thank you for, you know, for being open and transparent here. You know, I wanted to pass on your baton to that woman who is watching here tonight. So again, ladies, if you're watching here tonight, this is your first time watching us and you have an amazing story that, you know, you really want to tell, or maybe you don't even know if you want to tell it because you're kind of still going through it. Sometimes it helps when you talk about it because yeah. like Joanne said, that's where you get your healing. So mm -hmm. if that's what you want to do, go ahead, send us an email at queensmindset dot qm at gmail.com send us an email right there and you know we'll be ready to respond and let's see if we can get you on our next um season that is coming up very soon so that you can be a part of that cast too as well and tell your story heal yourself and encourage another woman i keep passing on the baton because that's what it's all about it's all about empowering each other because when one woman went one woman wins yes every woman every woman wins and and that's what we're about. We Amen. want everybody to win. You know, it's about that. So, Joanne, thank you once again for coming on tonight. You're like welcome. Pleasure having you. Thank, thank you. you so much.
Yes, you are most welcome. Thank you for sharing your story here with us. We definitely enjoyed it. I surely did. And I'm sure that a queen also did too as well. And ladies, remember, if you want to reach Joyan, tell them again where they can reach you at. At jtempleofjesus at yahoo.com or Facebook, Joyan Chandler. Awesome. So guys, you can go there and you can reach her there, send her a message and she'll be ready. And if you have joined us in the middle of this session here tonight, that's all right. The video will still be up. You can come back again, replay as many times as you want. And of course, make sure you share it with a friend and hit that subscribe button below so that you can be kept abreast on our next episode as we continue this series on battered bruised not broken. Okay, Have anyway. a great night, ladies. And we're going to see you on our next episode. Goodbye. Bye. See you later.